Well, this daily cancellation ends up uh, working out pretty well because uh, given the news of the day, it's all about babies and uh, why babies are good and why you should have them. But it begins with, uh, not with Roe v. Wade, but with a writer for The Atlantic. As we know, writers for The Atlantic are not the most perceptive or insightful bunch as a rule. And that rule seems to hold true for Atlantic writer Olga Kazan, who tweeted recently, quote, I'm still curious how women are supposed to have kids before they're 35 if they make $40,000 a year before they're 35 and childcare is $40,000. Now, the tweet has resonated enough to earn nearly 80,000 likes, with lots of people in the comments chiming in to agree that it's essentially impossible for a woman to have kids under the age of 35 unless she earns substantially more than the average income for that age bracket. And yet, shockingly, it turns out that, um, you know, many women have done exactly this. In fact, through history, literally billions of women have. This is one of the curious features of modern America life, American life, that people are constantly proclaiming it impossible to do the things which billions of other people have already done and are currently doing. So we can look around and see billions of people doing something and then say, bah, it's not possible. I can't. That's impossible. No one can do it except for these 10 billion people. This is because most of the time, when we say that we um, cannot do something, the sentence is incomplete. We haven't really finished the thought. What we meant to say is that we cannot do said thing while still maintaining the comfort and luxury that we've come to expect and demand. Uh, we cannot do it easily. We cannot do it without effort. We cannot do it while um, staying true to our undying principle that we should never have to make any personal sacrifices of any kind. We cannot do it without getting off the couch, etc. One of these caveats, or similar to it, usually silently accompanies our declarations about what we cannot do. And that's certainly the case here. But Olga is not alone, far from it. As people put off having children more and more, putting it off so long that eventually it becomes a physical impossibility in reality to have kids, at least without the help of a petri dish and a science lab, the reason often given by, by people who put it off is that it's not financially feasible to have kids. And this fear is encouraged by random fake statistics pulled out of thin air, like the statistic that childcare costs 40 grand a year. Um, putting your kid in childcare, in daycare, says Olga, is as expensive as a really expensive private school. Now, fortunately, this is not remotely true. In fact, the most expensive, the most expensive state for daycare is Massachusetts on average. And it, there it costs an average of $20,000 a year uh, to get daycare, which is absurdly high, but it's half of Olga's estimate. But if you live in most other states, you're paying under 15. Uh, in many states, the average is under 10,000 a year. In a state like Mississippi, it's half that. Now, there are, of course, many other fictional horror stories about the cost of having children, many of them coming from alleged authority figures more prominent than Olga on Twitter. The USDA, for example, put out a report last year claiming that the average child costs $15,000 a year. And this means that a family of three, if you do the math, is forking over forty-five grand a year just to keep their kids alive. I'm supposedly spending $60,000 a year just on my kids. That works out to um, about $270,000 per child to get them from age zero to age 18. And then if you have four kids, four or five of them, you know, like I do, then you're, you're, you're in the hole for a million plus. I mean, you got to be a millionaire to have kids. Now, admittedly, with, with Biden's inflation, it's starting to actually feel like you need to be a millionaire to afford groceries and gasoline, even just for yourself. But on average, assuming that hopefully the current trends don't hold for the next 18 years, um, these figures are nonsense. It is certainly possible, possible to spend 15 grand in a year on one child. I mean, you could do that. You could spend tr triple that if you wanted to. Yet there's no law of nature requiring that kind of financial investment. If there was, then billions of people who have kids now and who've had them in the past would not have been able to survive. And yet they did, and they do. The consequence of this way of thinking, believing that you need to have massive amounts of money in the bank just to afford even one kid, is that, as mentioned, people put off starting families later and later. You know, we think that we should get through young adulthood, establish ourselves, build a life of some, for, some sort, and then finally begin the process of finding spouses and becoming parents once we're safely ensconced in the protective cocoon of middle age. That's what we think. Speaking of finding a spouse, notice how Olga never accounts for marriage at all. It would cost a woman 40 grand a year for childcare, she says. But if you're doing it right, the cost, which definitely will not be 40 grand, is shared by a woman and a man together in the bond of marriage. 
We, we've been conditioned to see these things on an individualized basis. We think that, you know, a man should make a life for himself all alone and then inject a wife and kids into this thing that's already been constructed without them. Like set it all up and then introduce the family. And this strategy leads to a lot of its own problems. The man will often begin to resent his family because they're intruding. This is not their life, it's his. He can't look to his wife and kids and say, well, they were here with, with me when I had nothing. We were together from the beginning. We, we climbed to this point together. Rather, he looks at them and says, I built this on my own. I did all this on my, uh, by myself. I climbed without them. This is mine. They don't know anything about it, the freeloaders. I think this is probably what, one of the reasons why people who get married in their 30s have higher divorce rates. Because they've already established their own things and get very possessive of their own thing, their own life that they've made for themselves. Walking the bumpiest parts of the road together, struggling, sacrificing, suffering, going without together, this is what brings a family together. That's why, as I've always said, I think it's better to see marriage and family as the cornerstone of adult life rather than the capstone. In modern times, we tend to favor the capstone model. We say that a young adult should live through young adulthood by himself, save money, get all of his affairs in order, and then as the culmination, as the con- at the conclusion of this process, as he enters middle age, then he should commence with getting married and having kids. That way he'll be able to, quote-unquote, afford it. But the cornerstone approach, on the other hand, says that it's better to start your family at the beginning of the process, not at the end. Build your adult life with your spouse and children. Have them there at the foundation of it all. Bring them in on the ground floor, so to speak. This is how nearly every culture in the world has approached this issue until ours. We flipped this well-worn, battle-tested model on its head and tried it the reverse way, and it really doesn't seem to be working. The result has been higher divorce rates, lower marriage rates. People are less satisfied in, in life, not as happy. Population, populations are declining. And to top it all off, the people who hold off on, on having families for financial reasons very often discover, as mentioned, that they, 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 they never reach a point where they feel financially ready. Not at 25, not at 30, not at 35. They sit around waiting for the dollars and cents to add up while their biological clocks tick away until finally it'll cost them like $20,000 in an IVF clinic simply to conceive a child when they could have done it for free. And in a way that's a lot more fun, by the way, just a few years before that. This is supposed to be the financially conscious approach, which really doesn't make a lot of sense when you think about it. And that's why Olga at the Atlantic is today canceled. But even more than Olga at the Atlantic, as you might have already heard, Roe is canceled today too. As the Supreme Court, I think, has issued the greatest daily cancellation of all time. If you want to join my exclusive fan base or a cult, as really as that's what it is, we're, joining, we're forming a cult, then all you got to do is click the subscribe button and ring the bell below uh, this video to stay up to date with all my content. And if you want even more, you can watch or listen to my show at thedailywire.com, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts. Looking forward to welcoming you to the Sweet Baby Gang.